Professor Luigi Zingales. Welcome to the Marshall Institute. It's really a delight to have you here. My pleasure. So, so when we think about the third sector, perhaps the most parallel thing we have to profits is social impact. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you mentioned, this is very difficult to measure. How would we even approach the idea of social impact measurement um, to make it something that would be as useful as profits are in allocating um, and, and uh, facilitating innovation and competition in the private sector? So I think that the, the, the challenge is to try to measure uh, is the total value added for society. And, uh, and of course, when you think about value added, you have to think about the value added vis-a-vis -vis what, vis-a-vis -vis what counterfactual, what is the alternative. Uh, so if you think in, in uh, more narrow terms, in partial equilibrium terms, we say among economists, is you want to see how this particular organization change a pre-existing situation. And um, so you want to think about, uh, uh, from an environmental point of view, uh, what are the benefits uh, from uh, an employment point of view, what are the benefits of the counterfactual, uh, from uh, maybe a health point of view, what are the benefits of the counterfactual. Uh, the, the difficulties is that uh, all these benefits are difficult to monetize and put on the same term. So if I improve uh, 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 three months of living of people but, and I reduce uh, a little bit less the CO2 emission, uh, how do I trade those two things off? Uh, money is money. So you know I'm saving this and I'm gaining that. Uh, how to do that trade off? That, that's something that uh, is still very much uh, up in the air in terms of uh, ability to do that. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the trying to understand vis-a-vis -vis the counterfactual. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you mean about counterfactual? So I think that if you reason in, in partial equilibrium is relatively simple because you give uh, the existing situation as given and you're trying to see uh, it, what you add to the existing situation. Uh, once you go to what in economics we call general equilibrium, it's much more difficult. So let me make uh, an example. I think a lot of people are very fond of saying we should divest from oil companies in order to penalize and reduce CO2. And uh, you don't realize uh, two things. Number one is money is fungible. So if I don't invest in, uh, in uh, an oil company, most likely uh, somebody else will invest. And if somebody else would not invest and the, the price would go down, certainly I would find somebody with very little sort of pro-social values that see a, a, an opportunity to make more money by investing in that. And, and then the result is that uh, all oil companies will migrate in the hands of owners who have the least uh, concern for the environment. So they're going to use the policy that is worse for the environment. So uh, a well-intended action, like uh, uh, we want to divest from uh, uh, oil companies, end up uh, uh, causing more harm than good. That, that's what uh, is the general equilibrium component, which is so difficult uh, to analyze, but where I think as economists we have a comparative advantage, because uh, uh, it's very easy for even ordinary people to think about the partial equilibrium impact. Uh, the general equilibrium impact are more difficult to even think about. And to think from an organizational standpoint, you know, the CEO of an organization that is attempting to make social impact, how should they think about the additional impact they're making and the types of general equilibrium effects that you're talking about? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, I, I have a particular view here, uh, which is uh, you would, should listen to what your shareholders want, in a sense that uh, uh, in, uh, at the end of the day, if uh, we run our own company, we have some preferences. And, and most people don't care only about money, they care about other things. And we see very much in, in family-owned firms that they have other values besides the one that uh, are co co ordinary consider. Uh, now, the irony is that once we move from uh, private uh, family ownership to public ownership, uh, we tend to gravitate toward the least common denominator. Uh, and uh, the least common denominator is, of course, profits. And so companies tend to care only about that. Then occasionally you have some CEOs that uh, wake up uh, in the morning and decide uh, what is their social objective, which maybe is very valuable, maybe not. We don't know whether this is in, in any way uh, in sync with what uh, shareholders want. So my, my line of thinking 
uh, which is very much affected by a paper I just wrote with Oliver Hart, is very in the direction of saying, uh, let's try to find a better way for shareholders to uh, transfer uh, the concerns and objectives to, uh, through the organization to the CEO, to the board, to the people managing the company. Which could easily be concerns about social welfare and social impact. It doesn't have to be profits. Absolutely. I, as I said, most of us are concerned about things other than profits. I'm concerned about profits, but things other than profits. Uh, I think that uh, most corporations are not. So there is a disconnect between the two, and we should try to fix it, um, in my view, through better corporate governance. So, I think so. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Professor Zingales, for joining us, and it's been wonderful to have you. My pleasure.